point which we are trying to make through this story therefore uh, words are created by the mind and uh, mind obscures the truth that is the nature of the mind my idea is not to present mind as a devil or any such thing i just uh, 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 trying to understand its nature, uh, it is conditioned. Mind is conditioned, always, always conditioned, and therefore, whereas the reality is not conditioned, no conditions apply to the reality. Whereas mind is conditioned. Mind operates in within the measures. It always measures and operates within the measures, and it uses words. which always a define words always a define and particularize if the truth were to be measurable definitive particular then mind can catch the truth but mind the truth is none of them it is immeasurable it is not a definitive means if it becomes a definitive it becomes a dual you know so there are everywhere there are things that are different from it and uh, therefore uh, that way the duality will come uh, but the truth is not definitive like akasha what is the difference between uh, this space uh, here and this space elsewhere you hear the flight has crossed now into the space of united states of america what is that space where is it and what is it so space is not definitive we make it definitive that is how the mind makes it definitive this is our space that is your space even the oceans are like that from the shore uh, some distance is there that is the law international law up to 25 miles that ocean is a, it belongs to the country and that the country has a sovereign right over that part of the ocean and once a 25 mile line is crossed now it is called international waters it is not anybody is in particular so brahma is like that it is like international waters it doesn't belong to any particular country so brahma is not definitive therefore words cannot describe the brahman so that being the case words being the tool of the mind mind always ends up and uh, obscuring the truth and then uh, it distorts the truth and hence there is an urgent need to go beyond the the words you have to go beyond the words you to watch your words and uh, then uh, when we say you have to go beyond the words uh, you have to understand uh, the danger involved in giving reality to the concepts this is the huge pitfall of the students they have a concept which they take as the truth so uh you see i tell you how the person is asked i told it a few times earlier but again i am saying 
maybe first time in this group. So a, a person is asked, do you know God? That is the question. You know what answer he gave? <laughs> I know God, that is the first thing I know. In fact, my profession is God only. And I know God for the last thirty-forty years. And his age is forty. And God is our traditional thing it is. And not only our traditional, it is familial also. Now, you, what do you have made out of God? He belongs to a family, belongs to a caste, Kula Daivam, Vamsha Daivam. And then, of course, everybody talks of tradition. Therefore, now truth is a traditional. Truth is traditional. You tell me. You think about it. Tradition is what? Is it not a movement in time? Then truth is a, a movement in time or timeless? What is the truth? So, this is how the, there is always the danger of taking the concepts to be real. You know what truth is? Truth is not traditional. Truth is timeless, not traditional. But we would love, love to declare that it is traditional. This is how the mind distorts and the conditions. So, I tell you, a concept of the truth is not the truth. Not only that, it is a distortion of the truth. Uh -huh. And therefore, you have to abandon all conceptualization and stay silent and attentive. So, you be earnest about it and I assure you, all will be well with you. You will be in communion with the truth. Therefore, there is a, an urgent need to go beyond the words and concepts. That is the spirit of this story. That is how this story is worked out by the seers in the Yoga Vasistha. So now coming back to the story, I just gave you a small recap of the context of the story. Now these uh, three princes, they have uh, uh, reached uh, the city, the Bhavishyan Nagaram, the future city they have reached. It is like uh, in Hollywood they have made a movie, I did not say it. Uh, the name of the movie is 2050. And there is another movie by Hollywood. The name of the movie is 10,000 BC. Really? You see that movie, where from that movie comes? It comes from the ideas and the words that are there sitting in the head of, a, of an individual and then in the head of the director, in the head of the, all the actors and all that. Nothing to do with reality. So, like that. Bhavishyam <laughs> Nagaram. And there, these, these, these are the three princes, therefore, they have seen three palaces. Three princes to see three palaces. It is always like that. So, three in Bhavanani. And now, one of them is Nirbhitti. No walls. It has no walls. A palace without walls, which means it's not a palace. <laughs> it is something in the sitting in the head. It is nothing in particular. That is the idea. Uh, so now you t you tell me, what is, what is the fun of calling a palace bhavanam nirbhitti? What does it mean? A palace uh, which is not a palace because it has no walls. The idea is. Uh, the word is not the thing. That is the message. The word is not the thing. To find the thing, you must go beyond the word. Ah, you must go beyond. That is the idea. And uh, so, also there is a Grahadvayam. There are two more palaces left. They have seen three palaces. So what about the other two palaces? They are very interesting palaces. They were never constructed, Anutpannam, and they don't, also they don't have any foundations and uh, the supporting pillars they don't have. Nistambham, Stambha is a pillar 
Anupannam Nistambham. That, that kind of a paralysis. Immediately, you know, the funny part of it is, it, it is very real thing it is. Namely, in your mind, now, if you don't mind me saying like that, you are already thinking of three princes with the three palaces. That is how it works. That is the, that is the secret of this story. If we elders are like that, what to speak of a child who is listening to this story? He is happily immersed in that story. Huh? This only proves a point. The point is, for us, symbols have become much more important than the search for reality. You see, I tell you, life is a waste if there is no search for reality. How to search for reality. Otherwise, you know what will happen to life? You just uh, eat food and become sick, enjoy bhogas, become sick and uh, make money and become worried and uh, frightened. That is how life will become. There must be search for the truth. Okay, let us start the search for the truth. So then uh, what happens? We start. It is a very good intentioned effort. The intentions are good, but the intentions are not enough, you know. Intentions are good. In fact, a poet said, all bad things in this world are done by good intentioned people only. They all have, all dictators have very good intentions about their societies. All fascists loved their communities, their societies and their nations. And uh, the hell, uh, the, the path to the, a poet said, the path leading to the hell is paved by good intentions. <laughs> Therefore, uh, intention is not enough. Intention is good. God bless, that is a nice thing. Eh? The intention is to search for the truth. But now what happened in our lives, eh? the symbols have become much more important than the search for the truth itself. Now you have to think about it. The symbols are very important. So, uh, so now what happens, you start this, I am repeating, you start the search for the truth, that is a great uh, undertaking, but then uh, you are uh, you allow yourself to be crowded uh, with symbols. So many of them. Symbols. And if I start giving names, you will not like it, I tell you. And therefore, I am putting breaks uh, uh, upon myself. Symbols, that is all we want. Symbols. We already, we forgot the search for the truth long back. We started the search for the truth, then uh, get, got flooded with symbols, and now we, we are so much uh, flooded uh, by symbols, we don't have any space left uh, in our heads to continue the search for the truth. And then a story like this should come and shake us up. Otherwise, uh, you know why? The symbol, is simply a word associated with a concept that is not the truth. Symbol or the word is not the God, but they became important, which only proves that we are really not seeking reality. We are busy with our symbols and we are even more busy by in decorating our symbols. You have to decorate the symbol. First you create a symbol, and then uh, miss the whole search for the truth and then uh, uh, start decorating the symbol. I ask you a question. Are you seeking really what is beyond the symbol? Are you seeking or are you just uh, satisfied with the symbol? So one has to ask that question. So if uh, you, uh, if you are not uh, seeking what is beyond the symbol, then what happens is, uh, the symbol becomes extraordinarily important in our lives. 
The symbol becomes so important. So, in fact, people are ready to kill each other for the sake of the symbol. That is how it is. They are willing to kill for the sake of the symbol. So, amazing. Uh, you see, the grave of Abraham. What is Abraham? Abraham is Brahma. You, you look at that word Abraham, is it not Brahma? If you go to Punjab and say, ask them to tell what is Brahma, you know what they said? Braham. They don't say Brahma. Putra they don't say, Puttar. Mitra, no Mitra, Mittar. No Brahma, Braham. Putta, like school is his school, Braham is Abraham. Really, they write is school. Rajakiya. Rajakiya means government. Some such thing. A political Rajakiya. Uh, government, I think. Is school. So, anyway, uh, therefore, uh, there is a grave of Abraham. Grave. Abraham, grave. Kya baat hai? When did he live? Even according to the Old Testament, he lived a thousand years BC. Thousand BC. And he died. He happens to be the patriarch for not only Jude, Jewish people, but also Muslims. So, they, they revere the same guy, the Abraham, same patriarch. Uh, he must be a saintly person. And so, a grave. What grave are you talking about? Now, even according to the Old Testament, it is 3000 year old grave. It is what will remain there? Nothing will remain. But there is a symbol. And yearly riots happen because of that symbol. Every year riots happen. And so, and one more thing. I mean, if you are willing to examine the story, what is the story in it? There is no real story, you know. The purpose of teaching the story is to examine its value for us. That is the meaning. Otherwise, what is that? The child has had the story and he slept. So, that is not the point. You see, I tell you, the word God, okay, you don't say God, you may say Rama, Krishna or something or something, but the general word is God. The word, it is a symbol, you know. It is a word, it is a symbol, it is a concept, you know. All That is all that, is, that it is, nothing more than that. But the word God, gives us a stimulation. Something, some stimulation it gives to us. And uh, it gives us a sensation. Some sensation we get, God. Like, uh, uh, you know, children, uh, some, some procession is going there, uh, the child uh, comes running, what is it? Immediately mother tells, the God's procession, do namaskar. Therefore, the child will do namaskar. The child did not have that sensation in it. Just by hearing the name God, that sensation doesn't happen to the child yet. But it happens to us, because we are accustomed to that. Therefore, this stimulation, this sensation, by hearing the word God, or another word of some such a, a significant word, by hearing that, we get a sensation or stimulation. Now, I ask you a question. That sensation or stimulation, is it a mere thought process or has it got any connection with reality? You tell me. You think about it. It has no connection with any reality. It is a mere thought process. So, these are very, very embarrassing to examine. Because they shake the foundations of our ignorance. That is how these things operate. And also I will ask you, I have already asked you one question. The sensation created by the symbol, or the stimulation created by the symbol, is a, I, I say, it is a, a part of mere thought process, it has nothing to do with the reality. Now you think about it. And then, uh, I will ask one more question. Your uh, original pursuit is the search for the truth, but now you are busy with the symbols. 
Now my question is, uh, this is a symbol, is it, not a, is it not an escape from the reality? And also, is it not a fanciful distraction from the truth? So, people have to think about all that. Anyway, <coughs> so, you see, human beings, they are easy to satisfy, they get satisfied with images, and they just cling to symbols. Therefore, uh, I have seen, I am not commenting upon any particular individual, I have seen the tendency, the trend among people, among godmen in India. In India, you put the TV on, the godmen will be there, there will be a procession of godmen, one after the other. And the channels are devoted for godmen only. And uh, now I am going back, and now uh, the moment I land there, uh, there will be uh, pressure upon me, uh, because the channels, uh, I said after I come back from America, I will look at it like that, I said, that, that they take it literally. What I mean is, I am not looking at you at this point of time, that is what I mean. It doesn't mean I will certainly look at you after coming back from America. They take like that, and therefore, uh, so there is a procession of these godmen, one after the other, they will be coming. You know some godmen, what they do? They sit like this, and uh, everything is symbolic. A godman sits in a lotus. Very simple. Call a, um, uh, call a carpenter and he will make some lotus-like thing all around. And you sit inside and decorate that lotus. The devotees will do it happily. And so put painting and all that. And so from when you focus the uh, camera, you are looking at a lotus and the godman sitting there. Why you need that? And then uh, another godman, he will have uh, Lord Vishnu standing there, big Vishnu there, there, and he is here and teaching. What, what is that Vishnu sitting there? And another godman, Rangashayi, because God taking a nap, lying down, and so that very big symbol it is, very big uh, picture, I mean, a solid image, uh, a statue. He, he gets it and puts there, he, he fixes it there, and then he will be teaching. Is he armoring himself or what? It acts like an armor or I don't know. If what you are teaching is Vedanta, why you need symbols? If that is, if your search for the truth is, uh, is sincere, you should search for the truth only. You should not get carried away by or distracted by the symbols. So, uh, I tell you, if you want to find what is real, it is very obvious, there is no discussion about it, it is very obvious that you must leave the symbol. So you have to go beyond the symbol. You cannot just stay with the symbol. And then one symbol leads to another. And then you have to decorate the symbol, you have to carry the symbol all around the town, so that what symbol you are worshipping all people should know. So this story goes on like that. It is, a, it is an enormous distraction from the search for the truth. So, this is how the story uh, is presenting the, the theme. So, anyway, come back to the story. So, we are looking at three palaces. <coughs> and uh, one is uh, not having any walls. The other two palaces were never constructed. And also, they are not only not constructed, but they don't have any pillars. In fact, the other way it is. Nistambham Anupannam. They don't have any pillars. You know why? Because they were never constructed. Okay. Abhitti Mandiram Charu Pravishta Sten Rupatma Jaha. So that is Rupatma Jaha. That is the symbol. They are the princess. You know what kind of princess they were? <laughs> the two were never born and the third was never conceived. Garbha eva hinasthita. They were the princess, but we forgot all that. Now we are looking at the three real princesses. Aisha hota hai. 
anyway i i have disturbed your story for sorry for that so these three princes now they entered into those palaces without walls i will point out one more thing if you are willing are you willing <laughs> are you willing for this kind of a ruthless uh, incisive analysis let us hope so <laughs> you see a mind which is filled with the symbols and words is not a simple mind it is a complex mind it is it is not simple and you need to to search for the truth you need a very simple clear mind that is what you need a very simple clear mind a mind that is not flooded with symbols and concepts and ideas i said to flooded i have used a benign word if i have to be ruthless then i have to say a mind that is corrupted by symbols concepts etc i have to say that so you touch any person symbols and concepts etc will be pouring out you touch the guy hello sir how are you half a dozen symbols he will pour out symbols are concepts are whatever that is how people are that kind of a complex mind which is filled with the symbols Uh, so that means what you have decorated with your intellect in a very elaborate way it is like a, uh, suppose i have to come and sit in the chair now you decorate the chair so elaborately that you give a caution to me hey sit properly you don't disturb the decoration like that you give caution to me but if i am a bit clumsy i cannot sit without disturbing the chair you will throw me out of the window and because i am disturbing the uh, decoration the, the funny thing is the chair is meant for me in the first place i saw what i had the mind becomes very complex and uh, so you need a very simple and clear mind to find the real a mind that is caught in words phrases and the patterns of action means the moment the name is said the the symbol is put in place and so you start patterns of action so the moment <laughs> so anyway so such a mind uh, it can never understand what is real it cannot because it is totally it is so badly distracted it cannot understand the truth now i tell you to find the truth you need to make the, you, your mind needs to become free uh, that means you have to strip itself the strip the mind the mind has to do to itself nobody outside from outside you won't do it the mind has to strip itself of all names symbols everything and it has to become free like space you dismantle all the nomenclature the words the symbols uh, uh, the forms the images the concepts the ideas that you have piled up you dismantle all of that and make it open make it free make it simple then uh, the real will come into its own the real will come into being it is like you have decorated uh, the window through which the sun has to enter inside with uh, so heavily you decorated that window now the sun cannot enter inside so what you do is you just use your energy to remove all of that decoration and throw it uh, far away 
and leave the window open, then the sun will enter. So, therefore, uh, we have to understand that. Anyway, coming back to the story, then Rupatma Jaha, the princess, the children, the sons of the king, so they have entered into Chadu Mandiram, very beautiful palace. What beautiful? There is no wall, there is no pillar, uh, they were never constructed, but they are beautiful. Anyway, that is how the words are added, you know. That is how, the, it is all a structure built on words. Entirely a structure built on words. I don't know whether you are able to see it. I am, I am saying it uh, 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 while seeing it clearly like daylight. It is all built on words. The entire story is built on words. It's a big build up, I tell you. Already second class going on, it's a big build up. And uh, it is entirely built on words. And the child, Mugdha Balakaha, he is just consuming words. That is what he is consuming. And uh, he is not questioning. He is not saying, Hey, what are you doing? You are feeding me words. Where is the content? Like that he is not questioning. That's why he is the Mugdha Balakaha. And uh, so in our whole life, we are fed words without much content. That is what we are fed. And uh, so, and uh, what happens, you know, we, we are uh, so credulous, we just gulp all, that, uh, all those words that are fed to us. And uh, uh, because uh, we are not uh, having that enthusiasm, that originality to think and find out. Atma. What is Atma? Is yourself. And uh, so, you, you want to know about yourself through words and symbols and images and concepts and ideas? Is that what you want to do? Or, you keep all these things away and uh, think about yourself, look into yourself, search within and find out what is the method you should do? But thinking for myself, free from all concepts and ideas, etc., is a, is a painful process. Painful in the sense, it is not easy process. Whereas, getting fed by symbols, it is easy. You need not stress, you need not stretch your thinking faculty. You can just gulp what is all fed into you and develop a sense of complacency and remain quiet. I mean, uh, remain complacent, never knowing the, the truth in any case. So this is how there is an intellectual laziness on the, on the part of the people. They don't want to think for themselves. They always want somebody else to think on their behalf. And uh, so, whereas, uh, when you think, you think, and in doing so, go beyond the thought process, the established thought process, that there is a revolution, you need a revolution. And so you go beyond the words and images and uh, all that is fed to you by the family, by the society, uh, in the name of religion and culture, what is all fed to you, you have to go beyond all that by uh, engaging in revolutionary thinking and uh, without fitting yourself into any particular thought pattern, you have to think in a revolutionary way, then you are free. There is freedom. Freedom from the bondage of symbols, words and concepts. And in that freedom, there is joy. There is a creative being. And so, uh, in that creative being, the truth reveals itself. You do not invite the truth. The truth reveals itself. Therefore, that in the revolution, one has to uh, accomplish. And therefore, the story pushes the people in that direction. Anyway, let us make some progress in this story. 
பிராபுஸ்தாலீத்திரயம் தத்ர தப்தகாஞ்சனகல்பிதம் so they entered into the palaces and then immediately they found what so how the child is being told a story amazing they found three vessels now you see if you say three vessels uh, there is no thrill in the story that is stimulation is not there that sensation is missing but if you say three vessels made of 24 carat gold ah now it is an indian mind readily gulps it just loves it i tell you i said indian mind because india is the largest consumer of gold in the world i don't know other societies how they operate um so uh, th- that is how it op- it works in india so in india even in a small town there is a jeweler shop you see there is a small town called near hyderabad called nagar karnol not karnol nagar karnol a small town and uh, there is a anath uh, uh, the orphanage there and i occasionally go there and uh, the local person who takes care of that place he is my good dost he is my good friend he he is a, he runs a jewelry shop it's a small town uh, it is like wind gap uh, i don't know i never saw any jeweler shop in wind gap but then in nagarkarnol there is a jeweler shop one day while uh, discussing some of the other things i uh, suddenly it occurred to me are what kind of a business you are running how can you run a jeweler shop in a small town like nagarkarnol he said zoology you don't know we have our business not a problem that is what he said so you mean to say you sell a good number of jewels so that you can make a profit every month he said yes the, the shop is run by my father and now i am running and in spare time he is doing this service activity so he is doing all right <laughs> a small town you don't have an idea you have an idea also how many small towns could be there in india do you have any idea it not hundreds it will be in thousands hundreds is mega cities not small towns small towns will be in thousands and villages will be in hundreds of thousands india is a big country i mean population wise anyway uh, so it's all a digression so tapta kanchana kalpitam three vessels made of uh, gold not 14 carat gold tapta tapta means 24 carat that is what it is three vessels very good tatra kharpara tanjate dve eka churnata angata yeah so two of those vessels Uh, are in the form of multiple broken pieces karpara i have to check the dictionary uh, i don't have the translation with me let me say as of now karpara means a broken piece so take it like that i will confirm it later so two of the mm, uh, vessels karpara where is this yakshana uh, i don't know i have to search for it bala baba the tikka kara should help but uh, i did not to pinpoint this tikka correct okay and uh, one of the uh, vessels is in the form of powder Churnatam Gata. Okay? So now what the thought is, these two vessels which are in the form of multiple broken pieces are not the right vessels. Whereas the vessel which, is, which has become already powdered, powdered, that is the right vessel uh, to, for our purpose. That is how those three princes decided. So what they do, you know, 
जगृहस्ोन्नताम याता स्थाली ते शुद्ध बुद्ध दे आर वेरी इंटेलिजेंट प्रिंसेस यू नो देर फॉर दे हैव लुकड एट इट एंड कंक्लूडेड दट दीज टू वेस्टर्स विच हैव बिकम मल्टीपल पीसेस के नॉट सर्व अवर पर्पस वेल पर्पस मस्ट ओनली बी टू प्रिपेयर फूड वेर एज दी पर्टिकुलर वेस्टर्न मेड ऑफ गोल्ड बट बिकेम पाउडर सो दैट विल सर्व टू अवर पर्पस शुद्ध बुद्ध यू नो दे हैव है वेरी इंटेलिजेंट थिंकिंग सो दैट इज हाउ they decided and uh, that particular vessel which has already become all powder they have taken that vessel into hand <clears throat> so <laughs> very nice tasyam dronatrayam pakvam nyonam dronatrayena tu अंधस्तोद्विजर्भुक्त निर्मुखर्बुभोजि सो दट पर्टिकुलर वेस्सेल दे हैव टेकन इसी हू आर दोस हू हैव टेकन दट वेस्सेल द थ्री प्रिंसेस हू आर दोस थ्री प्रिंसेस टू वन ऑफ दम वॉज नेवर बोर्न एंड टू वर नेवर कंसीव्ड नाउ दे सो जस्ट हैव डिवाइड यू हू आर दीज प्रिंसेस अंड सो इन ए सत्संग जेंटल वन आस्क मे ए क्वेश्चन इन ए सत्संग ऐ एम दग्रेसिंग इन हैदराबाद हि आस्क मे यु सी शिवा हेज अ चिलड्रन विष्णु हेज अ चिलड्रन वै ब्रह्मदेवा डज नॉट हेव डिड नॉट गेट चिलड्रन वाट इज हिज प्रॉब्लम I was sitting in a chair. <laughs> I fell down. I think, and then they sprinkled some water on my face, <laughs> and I got up and sat. I am just telling some little hyperbole. So I told Mahatma Ji, "You should not. You you should be kind to me. What is this? I come for bhiksha, and uh, you hit me so hard. <laughs> I will not be able to eat my bhiksha even." Huh? I told I do not know. I do not know because the gentleman he asked in all seriousness this question. I do not know. If you know, please tell me. <laughs> I will try to answer him. Amazing. Anyway, in that vessel, they have cooked rice. Andhaha is rice. Andhaha is cooked rice. Annam etchatha. They cooked. So, how much rice they cooked? You know, there is a measure for the rice. It is called drona. So, this is an old-fashioned measure. In Telugu, it is called kunsamu. so uh, telugu people can immediately get it that's why i told it it is something it is something like a measure uh, nowadays nobody is measuring uh, they are they are only weighing but here uh, they they measure too uh, it, it it is uh, not weight uh, it is a, a measure like a gallon is a measure for liquid but for solid like rice Ah, bushel, bushel, bushel is a big measure. Is it a big vessel like thing? What is a bushel? It is a measure. What kind of measure it is? Ah, uh, it is something like a drona is a. I measure rice with this, okay? And the drona will be so. Uh, I measure with this, and so fill it and pour, fill it, pour, fill it, pour. So I have given you three dronas, three measures. Measure for measure, Shakespeare's drama is there. Anyway, so three measures I have given you. You have written three measures to me. That is the thing. 
Okay? So, three, only thing is that the drona will be at least five times bigger than this. It is too small for a drona. Five or half a dozen times as much as this vessel, that becomes one drona. Now, they have uh, taken rice to cook. They, these are rice eating people. So, they took rice to cook. And uh, so, how much rice do they have taken, you know? Three dronas minus three dronas rice they have taken. <laughs> that is what he says. Dronatrayam, dronatrayena nyonam. So, that much rice they have measured and taken. So, how much rice? Three minus three vessels of rice they have measured and taken. And uh, now the child, uh, oh, quite a substantial amount of rice they must have taken for cooking. <laughs> so, you know what happens is, uh, here the, the point you have to uh, appreciate, uh, you see mind gets a reflection, when this description is told, the mind gets a reflection in itself uh, that corresponds to the description. And uh, you, how can that happen? How can, that, how can there be a vessel which is all powder? How can there be a measure which is 3 minus 3? Now you, you ask those questions. But I, I tell you, already in the mind of the, the boy, a nice reflection is prepared. He already understood that a big vessel is ready and a, a small vessel is used, a measure is used to uh, measure the rice and it is measured three minus three times and uh, now it is put in the vessel and now it is ready for cooking. He, he is doing fine. He has no issue there. Because uh, the word, the word, it creates a reflection in the mind and that reflection corresponds to an image. Therefore the word has done its job, the mind has done its job and therefore everything is moving forward. Now you want to spoil it, you are welcome to spoil it, but from the point of view of the teacher who is teaching the story, the dhatri, that lady, and also the boy, they don't have any issue with that. They are quite fine. You got the point? Yeah. And uh, therefore this is how the verbalization covers, covers up the truth. Verbalization covers up the truth. In India, the politicians uh, use this method quite often. They come out with uh, so much verbalization, so loud verbalization, so vast, uh, expansive verbalization that eventually everybody forgets the core issue. The core issue is not there anymore. So much verbalization covers up. And now everybody is busy with the verbalization. And uh, the core issue is long forgotten, forgotten long back. It happens like that. There is so much uh, discussion on TV channels, so much fight, so much acrimonious debates are going on about an individual. There is nobody to give a cup of water to that individual. He is begging for a cup of water. Nobody cares for him. But you open the TV, big, big debates are going on, what happened to that person. And uh, he cries, why you stop your debates and give me something. They will throw him out, don't disturb our debates. So, if God comes into a temple, big, big temples are there, very busy temples, if God, temples or churches or whatever, whatever, if God comes there in form, fortunately God has no form, He doesn't hear, He doesn't see, so, na pasyati, pasyati, na pasyati or pasyati, whatever. So God is somehow beyond all these things, therefore He is able to survive. But otherwise if He takes a form and comes to the temple, they will throw Him out. <laughs> If Shankaracharya comes to America, 
They will ask him, you wait till the weekend, keep quiet in some corner, we don't have time, weekend you come and tell us whatever you want to tell, whether it is Advaita or Advaita. Like <laughs> that they will do. So similarly, if God comes, they will just throw him out. There are any, any number of stories on this particular episode, on this particular point, namely, the God really comes, but the devotee throws out the God, because the God doesn't fit into the image sitting in his head. This happens all the time. Anyway, uh, therefore, the verbalization is a huge problem. It is such a big problem, I have said already, it is such a big problem that people end up believing that they get some verbal content and they take that to be the truth. That is how they end up. Not first day, not uh, first month, not first year. After thirty, forty years of Vedanta, that is where they remain. That is the power of verbalization. It has such a stranglehold on the minds of people, they will not be able to come out of it. The conditioning is so powerful, they will not be able to come out of it. They resist. You are not resisting, I am grateful to you. They, if I say the same speech elsewhere, they will physically beat up and throw you out from there. Because they cannot withstand any such a attempt to question the deep conditioning into which they push themselves. They will throw epithets at you. Oh, you are not traditional or you are not conventional, you are not, uh, you do not uh, follow parampara, you this, that, Maybe they have standard epithets about it, and they throw all of them at the guy and dismiss the person. And they conveniently sit in the, in the darkness of uh, their conventions and ignorance and all that. I saw what I have. Anyway, uh, so, uh, they have taken uh, 3 minus 3, and uh, then cooked. And uh, you see, when you cook food, uh, again some cultures. First uh, you offer to Brahmana, and then only you have to eat. So otherwise you should not eat. So these princes, Shuddha Buddha Yaha, you know, they have very pure heart and all that. Therefore, they have invited a few Brahmanas, and uh, distributed the rice. So 3 minus 3 measures uh, cooked rice, <laughs> they distributed so, so, and all these brahmanas, so they happily enjoyed the food served by these people. And uh, these brahmanas, you know, brahmano bhojana priyaha. That is, a, there is a statement like that. A brahmana loves his food a lot. Here he says, bahu bhoji bhihi. You see? <laughs> so, the, the food was distributed to brahmanas who normally eat a lot of food. So like such brahmanas, very healthy brahmanas were invited and the food was distributed. Only small detail is missing, but now that is being filled, these brahmanas have no mouth. Nirmukhaihi bahu bhojibhihi. Okay, then, then the, the dharma have to follow, they have to follow the culture and tradition. Viprabhukta vasheshan tu. Bhukta mandho nurupatma jayihi Bhavishyan nagare tasmin Raja putra astrayo hite So he just reminds you, it is, don't forget that it is the city of Bhavishyat where all this happened. City of Bhavishyat. <laughs> city of Bhavishyat, very interesting. But there is no such animal as called Bhavishyat in this creation. But now we are talking of an event, a great event, a very, a very wonderful religious event that happened where lots of food was cooked and served and eaten quite happily by the Brahmanas who do not have mouths. And uh, so now the Rajaputras, the, the princes are so nice people, uh, so religious and uh, so cultured people. After Brahmana Bhojanam is over, that the prasadam, the what remains is called prasadam, bhukta vasesham, that they have, that rice and other things, they happily consumed that. 
and having consumed that in the city of Bhavishyat, Sukhameva Sthitaha. So I have condensed the story, you know, there is some more description, but then uh, I have to abridge it, so there I stopped. So they continued to live happily in that city. The story has come to an end. Okay? <laughs> so, Katha Kanchiki, Mano Intiki. Like that, there is a proverb in Telugu. The story, it is over, it will go to its birthplace called Kanchi. You know, in Chennai there is a city, near Chennai there is a town called Kanchi. So, the story is, has come from there and it will go back there. And we all, our job is now over, we had enough verbalization in our heads, let us go home. So that is how the story ended. Dhatye te kathita rama Valaka akshayika tava Iyam samsara rachana Vicharo jhita chetasam we will discuss uh, the only one sentence is there. We will discuss about it. All discussion has uh, conclu concluded. We will finish this part and then go to the next part of the uh, the first page where Brahma Vichara now begins. What is Brahma? So Jagat will be concluded with this story. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purna Purnamudachyate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Shishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyonamaha Harihi Om Dhatsatashi Krishna Arpanamastu